In this video, let's learn about enhanced form handling. As you can see from the previous video, with the help of enhanced navigation, even Blazor SSR can help developers to create interactive web applications. However, with enhanced navigation, the only thing the user can do is to navigate from page to page and load static pages. So what if the user wants to do something dynamic? What I mean is, for example, if we come to our application here, let's close this. Let's go to manage services. For example, if I click on Montreal, I want to list all of the servers that belong to Montreal. If I click on Ottawa, I want to list all of the servers that are in Ottawa. So that means the user is doing something on the page, provide some kind of information by either clicking or using keyboard. Other part of the page needs to be updated. So that's what I mean by dynamic. So with enhanced navigation, all we are doing is just navigating from page to page. Uh, even just clicking on this edit takes us to another page. Click on this close, take us back to the previous page. So there's no updates within the same page. But with the help of enhanced form handling, even Blazor SSR can help us to make a page dynamic. Right? We don't have to make anything fancy. We don't have to have Signal channel. We don't have to have WebAssembly. We can just use the edit form component to help us to achieve dynamic content and partial page update. And in this video, let's see how that's achieved. Let's jump into Visual Studio and let's go to server component. And here, what I want to do is to first of all, display the server component on the servers page. So let's go to servers page and let's for now, just put put the server component right here in the paragraph. So server component. We have used this server component before to demonstrate reusable component. And now let's put it back and try to use it to demonstrate enhanced form handling. So for now, let's put it here and rerun the application and let's see what is being rendered. All right, let's go to manage servers page and we can see that it says server one is in Toronto that is offline. So this part is from the server component. Now, what I want to do is to add a button here to toggle the status. So when I click on the button, the offline needs to change to online. And when I click on it again, the online will change back to offline. So basically the, the status of the server is toggled by clicking on the button. So for that, let's go to our server component and we need to add a button here. First, I want to add a space like this and then I want to give it a button. So this button is going to have to do something for us. And in Blazor ISSR, the only way you can do that is with the submit button. That means somehow we need to make this a form. Okay, so let's finish composing the button here. So btm btm primary and and let's just call it turn on or off. So in order for the submit button to submit anything back to the server to handle, we need to provide a form and it has to be the added form, not just the normal form. Okay, we're going to wrap all of the HTML inside the added form. Here, for edit form, we need to provide a model. Otherwise, it's not going to work. And the second thing is we need a form name. Okay, so uh, I'm going to call it server component form. Now, because I need the form, so I just need to add something to make sure the server is not now. And this doesn't seem to be useful because we're initializing this uh, right here but you will see why I have to do this in a moment. So I put it over here. Now, when the user click on the submit button, the information about the server will need to come back to, to a variable here. And for that, we have learned that we need to use the supply parameter from form attribute. And for that to make sense, this has to be changed to a property here. Now let's actually comment out this for now. And I'm going to give it a question mark here to make this nullable. And now I can apply the attribute. All right. Once this attribute is applied, 
this is considered as a parameter, and therefore our on parameter set is going to be triggered. So we're gonna have to override this event handler here on parameter set, which you learned this before. This is going to be the place where we initialize the server object. So if the server is now, we are going to initialize it, which is basically this part of the code. So let's copy this over here, and now we can remove this. Okay, so basically this line means that if server is now, then we are going to initialize with server one in Toronto. Now the form needs to be submitted and needs to be handled by a event handler. We learned that before, so we can say on submit, and who's going to handle that event? It's going to be change server status. You can call it anything. Right? This function or method is not implemented yet, but we're going to implement it right now. So here we're going to say if server is not now, then we are going to change server is online to the opposite of that. So this is going to toggle the is online status. All right. So if we do it this way, you are going to see that the server is always going to be null when it comes to here. So this is always going to be run. That's because inside the edit form, there's no input field. So therefore nothing is going to be submitted back. So therefore, when the supply on parameter from form happens, nothing is going to be supplied. Therefore, the server object is only going to stay now. When a user click on the submit button, in order for the forms to be actually submitting the server information, we actually have to put all of the fields for the server inside the form. Right? So I have done that. So I'm going to just copy and paste the code over here. And then I'm going to explain that a little bit. Here, you can see that we have input number which contains server ID. We have input text, contains server name and city. We have checkbox containing server is online status. And you can see that all of these are hidden fields. Hidden fields still work. And when the user click on the submit button, the information of the server object will be submitted back. And when that submit back to the server, when I say submit back to the server, I don't mean the server object. I mean the backend of the server. So when it comes to the backend, the supply parameter from form will work and the server object is going to be populated by these values. And that's what we want. After that happens, the change server status will be triggered and the server is online status will be toggled. That's what's happening. And once the server is online status is toggled, the view is going to be updated. And as you can see, the style domain is the color change. So therefore, we are going to have the color change. All right, so let's rerun the application and see what is going to happen. All right, the application is updated. Now we can see it says server one is in Toronto that is online. And if I click on turn, on or off, you can see that it actually changed to offline now. And the color changed to red. And if you pay attention to this, let's close this first tab. Just pay attention to this icon here. I click on it. You can see that it's actually refreshed. The whole page gets refreshed. So what if I do it this way? Here. Okay, so I make this broader smaller. And then if I scroll down to this line over here, I click on it. You see, the whole page reloaded, and therefore we lost our scrolling position. But if we scroll down, you can see the status actually changed to offline. Let's try this again. Now it's offline. I click on the button, the page gets refreshed, and it's changed to online. So our logic works. The only thing is that the whole page gets refreshed. Another way to demonstrate this is that let's go to network. And then let's click on turn on or off. And you can see that the server's page is a document and triggered by other. That means the whole page gets refreshed. If we watch this part as well, let's open it up, scroll down, click on it. You see this whole thing gets refreshed and therefore 
the elements collapsed. That means that we made this page dynamic. Okay, the user provide information and the backend server handle the information. The problem is now that the page is not partially rendered, it's completely re-rendered. And that's not interactive. We want the page to be interactive. And that's where enhanced form handling comes to rescue. We are using added form to try to achieve dynamic. However, that dynamic is dynamic, but the page is not partially rendered. Enhanced form handling will make the re-render partial. And it is actually very, very simple. We just need to add an attribute here. So enhance equals true. This is also called the parameter of the component. We set it to true. When we do that, let's rerun the application and let's go back over here. We scroll down and click on turn on or off. Now you see we don't lose our position, but the page is actually updated. You change to offline, click on it again, change to online, click it again, change to offline. And if we watch here, right? So let's open up, go to main, go to article, and we see our form here. Click on the button. You see the page is not reloaded and the information in it is updated, right? So page is partially reloaded. And now let's go to the network tab and let's try to click on the turn on off button here. And as you can see, every time I click on it, it goes to the server's page and it is a fetch type and initiator is also the blazor.web.js. So you can see that the enhanced navigation and the enhanced form handling is relying on the blazor.web.js. Therefore, you can see that enhanced form handling is using the same technology, which is all relying on the blazor.web.js. Let's go back to here. The enhanced form handling is also having the same structure here. Right? The user interact with the DOM. And then when the form is submitted, the supposed to be HTTP post request goes to the server, but is actually intercepted by blazor.web.js file. And then the JavaScript internally sends a fetch API and get information that is needed and then patches the DOM. And that's why you're seeing this initiator, blazor.web.js, and the type is fetch. And it's so simple. You just need to remember to use the enhance to, to set the enhance to true on the edit form. So that means with Blazor SSR, you already have all the tools to achieve interactivity. You can make the page interactive, you can make the page dynamic, and you don't have to do a lot of extra things which is gonna help us to partially render the page when we navigate from page to page. And with the help of enhanced form handling, we are going to be able to partially update the page when we need to make dynamic changes on the page. With these two features that is added in .NET 8, we can use Blazor SSR, static server-side rendering, to achieve almost everything we want to achieve. However, there's something even better which is called server interactivity. And I'm going to cover that on the next video. That's the main thing we're going to cover in this course.